Well, the backlog of surgeries at sick kids is growing. The hospital now says six of its 16 operating rooms are shut down right now. Sick kids made that decision to cancel certain surgeries last month. That was so that staff could be redeployed to the overburdened emergency department and intensive care unit. The hospital says it's canceled 279 procedures since then, bringing its surgical wait list to more than 6,100 children. Meanwhile, at least one ambulance has been on standby every day at SickKids since last week to transfer patients if necessary as the hospital continues to deal with those capacity issues we've been reporting for weeks now. SickKids says between two to eight patients each day are transferred to other hospitals. The hospital says they're taken to hospitals that may be closer to their home, and that is specifically if the hospital can properly care for them. Well, let's talk more about this now. We're joined live by Dr. Anna Banerjee, pediatric infectious diseases specialist at the University of Toronto. Dr. Banerjee, good to be talking to you this afternoon. When you look at Thank this, you and you see, see it, it's great to have you here. You know, when you look at the issues uh, that, that Sick Kids Hospital is facing around right dealing with making this decision to close surgical rooms to redeploy staff, uh, I mean, it seems like it seems like a bit of a desperate move here, but it seems like it was the right move based on a report we heard earlier this week saying that they've actually been managed to save lives based on what they've done. Yeah, absolutely. I think that everyone's trying to work together to try to uh, to save lives, to increase the capacity for these very, very sick children. And the fact that they have ambulances bringing the less sick kids to community hospitals, I think that's part of the strategy. Um, you know, the sicker ones, if a child is really lethargic and having a really struggling to breathe, that, that they should continue to go to sick kids. But someone who is, um, you know, has a cold, a fever, they have been, has been coughing for a while, it doesn't necessarily need to go to sick kids. I really should try to go somewhere else. Yeah, I, I really did want to clarify that, Dr. Banerjee, because, of course, Sick Kids has such a stellar reputation in terms of what it can do for sick children, uh, quite obviously. And so I think, you know, parents may be thinking, well, my child is sick, I should just go straight to Sick Kids if it's sort of, you know, nearby or sort of close enough. But what is kind of the threshold? Can you help, perhaps maybe help parents understand in this era or sort of period we're in right now where there's RSV, there's flu, and, of course, still COVID-19? Well, so if your child is, um, basically, if your child has respiratory distress, really struggling to breathe, uh, is not feeding, not urinating, um, and uh, looking dusky color or is lethargic, they need to go to sick kids right away. You know, the other situations where your child is, you know, a little bit so-so, you probably can go to other places. Mm -hmm. But if you're child as well, it just has a fever and a runny nose, maybe a little bit of a cough, then you may not need to go anywhere except for your primary care provider or there are other walk-in kinds of clinics mm -hmm. so that you can take the burden off sick kids so they can see the sicker kids. Uh, I've got to ask you as a doctor, Dr. Banerjee, this triple threat right now of RSV, flu uh, and COVID-19, is this, is this something you've ever seen before in your career? No, and I don't think it's anything any of us have ever seen in our careers. And I hear that uh, COVID is making a resurgence in children in, in the United States. So we don't really know what's going to happen here. My biggest fear right now is as the the hospitals, the children's hospitals have adapted and increased their capacity, um, you know, doubling ICUs in some circumstances, um, you know, people are very, very tired, but the RSV, COVID, and uh, influenza really hasn't gone into the Indigenous communities yet. Once it goes there, a lot of these kids that get very, very sick, especially kids in the Arctic, they get very sick and they need admission. Mm -hmm. um, and they need to be medevaced by plane to these hospitals. And if they're already full and they reach their capacity, where do these Indigenous children go? That's one of my big fears. Well, that is, yeah, it's a significant fear indeed. And I also wonder, Dr. Banerjee, as we're talking about this, I mean, it, this story uh, and sort of particularly, the, you know, this time of year right now, what's happening with, with, with sick children is, you know, a lot of parents are on edge. You know, they're watching their stories. They're hearing these stories. They're reading these stories. What kind of guidance or perhaps even comforting words might you give to parents when, you know, they're kind of literally almost bombarded with kind of this news about hospitals filling up, sick children and the concerns here? What, what would you say to them? So you can do things to reduce the risk. For example, get your kids vaccinated. You know, influenza, COVID, that's going to make a big difference in, in the severity of illness or even getting the illness. So uh, get get your kids vaccinated. If your child is sick or you're sick, then stay at home. Wear a mask, especially at schools. And when you're during the holidays, try to avoid large indoor gatherings, mm -hmm. um, especially during the holidays. Just limit the number of people you're seeing. So there are things that you can do to reduce 
the risk in your child. And if you get your kids vaccinated, then the risks of ending up in the emergency department are much, much less. So, you know, there are actions you can take. We have some control. I think that's the message we'll take from that. Dr. Banerjee from the yes. University of Toronto, really appreciate the time and, of course, the advice this afternoon. Thanks so much.